So where I saw the most movement when I was manifesting my specific person was especially during the times where I'd actually put it a bit towards the back of my mind. You know, my specific person was often in my mind, even in the times where I was focusing on other things. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you and just say I completely forgot about him because I didn't. He was always somewhere in my mind. And quite there was a, quite a few times where he was quite far back at the, the back of my mind and I was really, really focused on other things. And it was those times where I felt better and, you know, not in this conflict with my reality and, um, you know, what I wanted or what I was thinking about with him or whatever. It was just that I was focusing more on the present and in those times I felt better and it wasn't that actually things happened straight away during those times. You know, there was periods of silence that went on for a long time with me and him over the years. Um, if you're just jumping into my channel and you've just found this story and you've he heard me say the word years, don't freak out <laughs> because my journey's my journey. And, you know, you'll you'll hear more about it if you listen to my videos. But there was a long, long period of time where I had no idea what I was doing, no idea about conscious creation at all. Um, and I was just manifesting without realising that I was manifesting. So just to put your mind at ease that my story is not your story and please don't compare your story to mine or anybody else's. I just share my experiences because, you know, that's my experience and, and we're all human at the end of the day. It's how we connect through stories and vulnerability and shared experiences. So, um, you know, in the, my experience, during times where I was really focusing on my creativity, on my passions, on my interests, I was having fun, I was going out with friends, I wasn't trying to get the relationship to happen. That's often when things happened much more seamlessly and naturally and easily. I sent a voice note into the um, Conscious Creators group this morning and it was interesting because I remembered a time where we hadn't spoken for a really long time and during that time I'd done my master's degree, I was really focused on my music, I was I was feeling really good about myself and he, I wasn't trying to be with him, I wasn't trying to think about him, I wasn't wishing he would contact me or anything like that. I was just, you know, he was there in my head like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll hear from him at some point, like that. That's the level of detachment I felt at the time. And so whenever he did contact me, I was kind of, you know, of course, of course he's contacting me. And then, you know, when we saw each other, there was no trying to get him to commit, commit to me, no trying to make it happen. It just happened. It was easy without trying. He just, you know, he was the one who suggested, I really want to be your boyfriend. That's what he said. And and it it really felt like there was no effort involved during that time because life had moved on. And I don't know, maybe there was a, a bit of div divine timing in this as well. There was there was some of that there that actually was was part of it, I believe. There was a part of our journey in particular where it felt like when I look back, I really do still now look back at it and think I had to go through what I went through he had to go through what he was going through and I couldn't rush it and I couldn't force it. And, you know, I could have done all the techniques in the world, but that still had to be the case. And personally, I don't like it when people go, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And I can't say I don't like it. It's just that I feel uncomfortable when I hear that because I did that too. And I look back at myself saying that and I think I was doing nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I just didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. I was where I was. And every every part of my journey had to be that way. And I became more and more conscious of, as time went on through diving into learning about self-love in particular, you know, and really connecting to myself. That was the biggest thing. Connecting to myself made me feel more complete and more satisfied within myself. So there was less need and dependency on him. And actually for me, I believe absolutely 100% no for sure that I did not heal. I did not, you know, uh, fully release my old patterns and traumas before he came back into my life. He fully committed to me um, whenever I don't feel like I was fully, fully there, but I had so much more awareness so it felt like I was able to navigate the relationship without sabotaging it the ways that I had in the past. 
um, in a different way. So I had so much more awareness that meant that I was showing up differently, even if the patterns emotionally hadn't fully healed, right? So I didn't always feel 100% better. Absolutely, definitely not. So you can manifest a relationship no matter where you are on your journey, but what where people often go wrong is that they... I don't like the word sabotage. Um, it's more self-protect. I actually did a video about the, that the other day. You go into self-protection mode, which creates behaviours that accidentally, you know, might push the other person away. That isn't sabotaging. It is your body feeling not safe, which is why nervous system regulation work has been so, so, so important to me and so profound on my journey to creating the relationship that I'm in now, which I'm still creating, still evolving through. Still there's deaths and rebirths in our relationship, even though, you know, we're still together. Um, It's just part of the cycle. And so for me, I think the main things that created movement were when I was focused on myself and I was less attached to the outcome and that's really hard to do but you have to basically you only let go like I've said in other videos when the the pain of holding on is worse than the risk of letting go so we get there in our own time in our own way and I found that that happens for everybody we get there in our own time in our own way our own pace and different things trigger that um ability to let go um but there's there's many things that you can do to encourage uh, your ability to let go, like, you know, creating things that you love doing, being around positive people, um, talking honestly about the thing that you're stressing out about less to people. Um, I know that's that's that can be difficult. It was really difficult for me. That's another thing that helped me shift it stopping talking about it to everybody because I was talking about it to everybody. Um, in a way that was like, I'm I'm going through this, I'm going through this, I'm going through this. And as a result of that, I was still going through that. I was still going through that stage of the manifestation. And as soon as I started talking about it in a different way, you know, which was helped for me with coaching, with um, uh, friends, with other things that I was doing, I started to feel like I was shifting and I was moving. And as a result of that, my connection with my um, the person that I'm now with shifted too. OK, the biggest transformation I have felt in our entire journey has been my ability to focus on my connection with myself as a priority over him, my connection with him, because my connection with him is a bonus to my wholeness within myself. Right. Rather than the thing that makes me happy. And it, and in fact, I found that the times where I was relying on him to make me happy were the worst times, really were the, were the hardest times. Um, and I learned that the hard way, basically. And so I now want to share my experiences with you guys to show you how important your connection with yourself is. Um, and also show you that, yes, you can create an entirely different dynamic with a person, but you've got to embody the person that you want to be, you know, and, and, and actually, first of all, I, I really do think the, the main thing with creating anything is believing that it's possible. Like, do you believe that it's possible? That's the first thing. If you believe it's possible, it's possible. That's just full stop. Um, and then the other stuff is just, is, um, I believe, and in my experience, it was divine timing, some of that, and it was letting each other be where we were and really doing everything I could to, like, learn about self-love, which is, by the way, there's the self-love manual, which is on my website, you can download that, and there's also the Conscious Creators Masters Academy, which is all about that, all about really learning to let go of your patterns and your ways of thinking that are keeping you stuck there and changing the narrative which, like I say, are the things that really helped me shift. Um, and having that community is incredibly powerful when you're doing this because it can feel really, really isolating, I know. Um, so there's these things. Um, and yeah, the self-love thing. And just trusting the process and believing that it's possible. Those things massively help to create 
uh, changes and movement, actual movement, you know. If you're moving, if you're shifting, if you're internally adjusting the way that you're thinking and feeling and your experience in your environment around you, if you're doing that, your life will do that and your relationships will do that and you will see a different reflection. But if you're kind of doing the same thing day in, day out, you're thinking the same thoughts, you're doing the same things, you're experiencing the same stuff over and over and over again, then we keep on seeing the same reflection in our relationships. And I found that absolutely definitely to be true. When I shifted and my life shifted and, you know, things around me started to shift he started to shift too. It was mad. It was it's actually crazy looking back. Um, but definitely the biggest changes were when I was really feeling free of the obsession of him and um and I was more focused on myself and I was less attached. And in those moments that's when I saw the biggest changes and I was just in a state of more of letting go more than anything. I actually do have a workshop on my website called How to Let Go, which is a very powerful workshop. If you'd like to look at that, you can find the information for that on my website. Um, but yeah, I think those things were, I know it, it sounds a bit, it sounds a bit vague because there's no specific thing. I said to, to the Conscious Creators group earlier, you know, you will maybe come to a time in your life where someone asks you, how did you do it? What was it that you changed when you when you saw the movement in your life? And you will find it hard to know specifically exactly what it was. So I'm telling you, with the, the knowledge that I have and from what I can see, it looks like I saw the most movement when I was more focused on myself and less focused on obsessing and worrying about what would happen with him. And so if you're not there yet, it's because you're attached and you're attached because you're scared of letting go. And you're scared of letting go because there's a feared consequence. And once you actually soothe that part of you, and it might be unconscious, it might need some coaching or someone to talk to about this. You know, this is also what we do in the conscious creators. Then you will, that fear will become less and you'll be able to let go more easily because you will not feel that feared consequence so much and you'll trust yourself and you'll know that everything's okay and you're going to be okay no matter what and then you'll feel that shift within yourself and then you'll see there are shifts in your connections and your relationships that seems to be what happened with me so i hope you found this video useful if you'd like any more information about the conscious creators masters academy i'd love to hear from you and i'll see you in the next video